So uh, we're a fourth generation family business. Uh, the business was started by uh, my great grandfather. I work here uh, with my brother Stephen. We uh, run the business day to day. Um, and uh, we inherited it from our father and he inherited it from his father and mother and his mother was the, the daughter, the only daughter of uh, P.T. Murphy who was also uh, on the high street here. He was born in what's now the Hart Bar and was actually the Hart Bar when he was born as well. Um, but so we're here 121 years. Uh, he uh, trained across the road in what was Statham's Jewellers and is O'Connor's Jewellers now. Uh, and so uh, he was very kind to come straight across the road and open up an opposition, which I wouldn't be too happy about, but anyway, he did. Uh, but he, he set up a, gr a great business here and uh, he really drove it on. My uh, grandfather, who took over the day-to-day the -day running, um, in the 40s, uh, was also a teacher in St. Kieran's College, uh, so he was double jobbing along with his 10 children. Uh, and so uh, he maintained the business until uh, my dad came into the business in the uh, mid to late 70s. And my dad was a, a watchmaker and he really uh, kind of changed the focus of the business to be more diamond, uh, and kind of wedding ring orientated and really kind of changed the business a lot. So we have uh, 14 people working here at the minute, uh, many uh, part-time, um, but that's, that's how many we have here. So obviously we buy in a lot of jewellery, so we do mainly uh, nine carat uh, gold and uh, for your kind of everyday jewellery, and then we do 18 carat and platinum uh, for your more special occasions. Uh, your engagement rings and your wedding rings, eternity rings and stuff like that. We also uh, carry some uh, nice uh, international brands like Fabergé and uh, Fope who are a uh, very nice Italian uh, 18 karat gold jeweller. Uh, our energy usage is high but it used to be a lot higher. Uh, we have managed to reduce it uh, thanks to a couple of steps we've made. Um, I suppose our main energy usage would be in our lighting. The main thing we've done is we've replaced all of our lighting, uh, so we would have had a lot of halogen and metal halite uh, lighting, which are incredibly um, energy uh, intensive. They really produce more heat than they do anything else. Uh, and so we've gone uh, from that to full LED all around the house. Uh, so that has brought down the, the energy uh, by a huge amount. We've also implemented a um, heating zoning system uh, using Hive controllers uh, for our heating so we can now heat uh, the different parts of the building uh, depending on uh, you know, who's there, whether it's hot or cold. The shop floor is usually the, the coldest and the, the part that needs the most heat because the door is open. Uh, so we're trying, uh, and you, in the winter, the, the heating is usually on on the shop floor the most, uh, whereas the, the top of the house or the workshop, which are the other zones, are usually not as cold, so they don't have to have their heating on as much, whereas previously, all the heating was on around the whole house the whole day. Besides the heating and the, the lighting, there wasn't a huge amount else we could do, but for decades, to be honest with you, we have always uh, taken in we get lots of boxes every day with deliveries uh, and we've taken, not only do we reuse the boxes and the, the padded envelopes that they come in, and we just usually recover them with brown paper, but we also take the, the, the soft packaging that's inside to keep the item safe, uh, bubble wrap and stuff like that, and we, we, we keep that uh, in-house and we reuse that to, to post our stuff back out. Uh, with us, really, the only way we measure is looking at our uh, electricity and our gas bill, and have they gone up and have they come down? And thankfully, they've they've both come down. We're always on the lookout for kind of micro generation uh, electricity generation solutions. Um, I kind of keep an eye on as much as I can, but haven't uh, haven't come across anything that's suitable or on the market just yet. The first thing I would say is. Look into it. You know, if you're if you're in a more modern building, I think it's an absolute no-brainer. I'd be putting in solar panels and everything I could uh, in, into my building. Obviously, changing lighting. Like people often don't realise uh, how much energy is used in the lighting and and the difference and the drop in energy usage 
going to LED is, is massive. Uh, also, the, the length of time an LED uh, light lasts is way, way longer. Um, you know, you're talking a, a light probably lasting for 10 to 15 years as opposed to a bulb maybe less than a year. So you're obviously saving on replacing all the bulbs uh, to actually putting in a light fitting that's okay, a bit more expensive than an individual bulb, but you're uh, getting a lot more time out of it and it's a lot more energy efficient. In an older building like ours, obviously I would say look into as much as you can do. We would have loved to insulate this building within an inch of its life. Uh, unfortunately, given the age and the uh, protected structure that we have, um, you know, we're very limited in, in where we can uh, insulate and stuff like that. Uh, and obviously the way we operate our business in terms of uh, having an open door, uh, that also limits the, our ability to keep heat, particularly in the winter, in the building. Um, but if we close the door, our sales go through the floor. So we have to have an open door and uh, given other restrictions like our height at our door place, we find it very hard to get an air curtain there as well. So, but there are loads of solutions, and I think uh, definitely engaging with um, companies uh, and uh, advisors on the kind of processes that you can put in place. We've had multiple different people here between solar panel experts and uh, insulation and uh, all sorts of people here advising us and uh, offering us uh, solutions. A lot of the time, unfortunately, the, we're, we're an awkward case. Yeah, we're an awkward case, obviously, because of our building, the age, the history, the fact that it's protected. Um, and look, we're very happy in our building and in our location and all the rest, but it does put a lot of restrictions on what we can and cannot do. Um, you know, we have, to make, we have to keep our windows, we have, to, uh, we have our head heights, which are probably a lot lower than they would be in a more modern building. So there's a lot of issues for us that uh, if we were in a brand new building, we wouldn't have or we could easily uh, get around. But we are where we are and we're happy where we are, but it does put restrictions on what we can put in place. Like we would love if there was maybe a, an option where we could buy into a, a solar scheme where maybe solar panels were erected on the market yard here in Kilkenny and we could buy our energy from that or contribute that way. Uh, I'm not sure how that would ever work, but you know, something like that, that you know, we could offset uh, some of our energy uh, rather than just all gas and straight from the grid that you know that we could offset some of it to uh, a more community-based solar panel solution uh, or some sort of solution like that would be would be great for us. We'd we'd love to partake in something like that.